Hi everybody, my name is Felix Dronas and I'm going to be doing my presentation on Leonhard Euler. So at a glance, he was born on April 15, 1707 and died on September 18, 1783. Published more texts than any other mathematician during his time. His work encompassed all the mathematics, nearly all the physics, and a significant part of astronomy. And at one point in time, much of the research in mathematics and physics carried out between 1730 and 1780 was solely Euler's work. He went completely blind at the age of 64, however much of the work he did was in the last two decades of his life while he was totally blind. So he was born on April 15, 1707 in Basel, Switzerland. 1720, at the age of 13, he enrolled at the University of Basel and he graduated three years later with the Masters of Philosophy. His father, Paul Euler, had studied mathematics at university and was friends of the Bernoulli family. Private lessons with Johann Bernoulli revealed that Leonhard was blessed with astonishing mathematical talents. He writes, I soon found an opportunity to be introduced to a famous professor, Johann Bernoulli. True, he was very busy and so refused flatly to give me private lessons, but he gave me much more valuable advice to start reading more difficult mathematical books on my own and to study them as dig diligently as I could. If I came across some obstacle or difficulty, I was given permission to visit him freely every Sunday afternoon and he kindly explained to me everything I could not understand. So he studied theology in order to follow his father's wishes, but he could not find the same enthusiasm for st the study of theology, Greek, and Hebrew that he found in mathematics. So he obtained his father's consent to study mathematics after Johann Bernoulli convinced his father that Leonhard was destined to become a great mathematician. Euler completed his studies at the University of Basel in 1726, and in 1727 he applied for a position as a physics professor at Basel University, but he was turned down. At this time, a new center of science had appeared in Europe, uh, and it was called the St. Petersburg Academy of Sciences. Since Russia had few scientists of its own at the time, many foreigners were invited to work at the center, and among them was Euler. Moving to Russia in 1727, Euler served in the Navy before joining the St. Petersburg Academy as a professor of physics and later heading its mathematical division. His time at the academy can best be summarized as such. After 1730, he carried out state projects dealing with cartography, science education, magnetism, fire engines, machines, and shipbuilding. The core of his research program was now set in place. Number theory, infinitary analysis, including its emerging branches, differential equations, and the calculus of variations, and rational mechanics. He viewed these three fields as intimately interconnected, and his studies of this number theory were vital to the foundations of calculus, and the special functions and differential equations were essential to rational mechanics, which applied concrete problems. By this time, he had published many articles and his book, Mechanica. His book extensively presented Newtonian dynamics in the form of mathematical analysis for the first time. Euler's long-time health problems began in 1735 after he had a severe fever and almost lost his life. At, by the end of the decade, he was suffering from both fevers and an overexertion due to cartography work, and Euler was severely hampered in the ability to see from his right eye. 1740, Euler was invited to Berlin by Prussian King Frederick II to help establish the Academy of Sciences. He moved to Berlin in 1741 and became the director of mathematics at the academy in 1744. He continued his amazing work in Berlin, writing about 380 articles during his 25-year tenure. He also wrote books on calculus of variations, the calculus, calculations of planetary orbits, artillery and ballistics, analysis, shipbuilding and navigation, the motion of the moon, and differential calculus. However, in 1766, Euler's relations with Frederick II had deteriorated, so he decided to return to the Academy of St. Petersburg. A cataract formed soon after in his remaining good eye, and by 1771, he was completely blind. Despite this, Euler continued his work consistently. He produced half of his total research during his time while completely blind. On September 18, 1783, Euler died from a brain hemorrhage in St. Petersburg. After his death, the Academy at St. Petersburg continued publishing his prolific work for about 50 years. Leonhardi Euleri Opera Omnia sorry for the pronunciation, is a full presentation of his work and has had dozens of volumes published over the years. This project has taken more than a century to complete. Euler made many important discoveries in the field of mathematics and his work has contributed to the influence on graph theory, calculus, trigonometry, geometry, algebra, physics, music theory, and astronomy. So he did have a lot of contributions to mathematics. 
Um, a few of his most famous contributions uh, to mathematics include mathematical notations, number theory, graph theory, and applied math. So he introduced and popularized many different mathematical notations that we use to this day, such as e for the base of natural logs, i for the square root of negative 1, the notation f of x for a function, a sigma for a summation, pi for pi, uh, and the modern notation for the trigonomic functions. So number theory uh, is defined as a branch of mathematics that deals with properties and relationships of numbers. Uh, he proved Newton's identities for Mons Little Theorem for Mons Theorem on sums of two squares. And in 1732, Euler discovered the eighth perfect number, which is 2 to the 30th times 2 to the 31st minus 1, which is equal to that very large number you see on the screen. Don't know how exactly I would read that, so I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, which is also known as the Mersenne, Mersenne prime. In graph theory, he solved a problem known as the seven bridges of Koinsberg. Uh, the problem was, is it possible to follow a path that crosses each bridge exactly once and returns to the starting point? The answer, it's not. Since each landmass has an odd number of bridges, and if someone departed and returned from each bridge an odd number of times, they would end up departing on the last bridge, making it possible to return to the point of origin. This solution is considered to be the first theorem of graph theory and planar graph theory. Euler also introduced the notion now known as the Euler characteristic of space and a formula relating the number of edges, vertices, and faces of a convex polyhedron, which is Euler's polyhedron formula V minus E plus F equals 2. In applied mathematics, he had some great success solving real world problems. He integrated Leibniz's differential calculus with Newton's methods of fluctuations. Flux, yeah. He developed tools that made it easier to apply calculus to physical problems. He and he invented what are now known as Euler's approximation, which led to Euler's method and the Euler-Maclaurin formula. Euler also facilitated the use of differential equations, in particular, introducing the Euler-Mascheroni constant, which you see right there on the screen as well. Uh, he has a, a lot of namesakes, uh, meaning he has a lot of things named after him. A few include the Euler identity, Euler's formula, Euler's polyhedron formula, Euler's constant, and so many more. Uh, real quick, the image on the side, I just thought it was funny. Um, someone mentions a list of things not named after Euler, Pythagorean theorem, and so it just kind of shows you exactly how much is actually named after him. Uh, he's had a few influential texts, which include Mechanica, Introductio in Analysis Informium, Institutiones Calculi Differentialis, Elements of Algebra, and Institutions Calculus Integralis. Sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, yeah, so the homework question is using Euler's polyhedron formula, V minus E plus F equals 2. Plug in V, E, and F for the following uh, for a cube a triangular prism, an octahedron, and a tetrahedron. Thank you very much.